Hello, uh, welcome to the tiny principality of Monaco on the uh, southern French coast. So I've been on the uh, French coast for about a week now, and I'm going to finish up my trip to France with a weekend stay in the principality of Monaco. It is 35 degrees today, and it's absolutely red hot already. It's not even lunchtime yet. So we're going to go for a tour around the city, and I'm going to show you what you can see here, what you can do here, and how to stay here without breaking the bank. So follow me for a tour of Monaco. Monaco is a sovereign city-state and an independent microstate located on the French Riviera. It is the second smallest independent state in the world after the Vatican City. Monaco is home to 38,000 people, over 30% of which are classed as millionaires. This, taken together with its tax haven status and its international offshore banking sector, makes Monaco one of the richest places on earth. I'm sure you've heard of Monaco, otherwise you wouldn't be on this video. But how many of you would be able to accurately point it out on a map? So, I've done it for you. Here we are, here's a map, and here's Monaco. Monaco is located on the southeastern French Mediterranean coast, about eight kilometres away from the western Italian border. If you're going to visit Monaco, and you're not coming by private yacht, chances are you'll start your journey here. The Côte d'Azur International Airport, near Nice in France. The Cote d'Azur Airport is quite a good little airport. It's similar in size to Gatwick in the UK or Newark in New York. For onward travel to Monaco, which is about 15 kilometres to the east of the Cote d'Azur Airport, you've got a number of options. You can take a helicopter on a scheduled flight, which is €140 Euros per person one way. You can take a taxi. Uh, for example, Uber will cost you about €50 Euros one way. Just remember that Uber can drop off in Monaco but can't pick up as it's not licensed to operate in Monaco. Or you can take the train, which is about 30 minutes in total, and it'll cost you a very reasonable five euros. Now, of course, I didn't go straight to Monaco. After arriving in the Côte d'Azur airport from the UK, I then spent a week in the beautiful Mediterranean resort city of Nice, which I thoroughly recommend you do too as part of your trip. And I'll try and upload some content about Nice later on. So, in effect, my journey to Monaco actually started a week later at, at this location, the Garden Nice, or Nice Central Rail Station. Here I picked up the TER regional train to Monte Carlo Station in Monaco. The TER train is a double-decker air-conditioned regional train. As I said, the ticket's about €4 Euros from Central Nice, and the journey about 22 minutes long. Much of the journey, unfortunately, is in tunnels, but a view across the Mediterranean, when you can see above ground, is absolutely beautiful. Something that's very easy to overlook is that legally you are crossing an international border by entering Monaco, either by rail or by road from France. But Monaco is in the Schengen zone, so therefore there are no routine border controls at points of entry from Monaco to France. However, if you are a non-EU citizen, and we British are no longer EU citizens, you must take your passport with you in case of a spot check. Monte Carlo Station is run by the French National SNCF company. It is subterranean, brightly lit and super modern. The state of Monaco is divided into three distinct municipalities. Monte Carlo, which I think everybody's heard of, which is the principal residential municipality in the east. Monacoville, the old town and the seat of government, located on a high rocky outcrop overlooking the whole state, and La Condamine, the southwestern sector, including the port area called Port Hercule. We're going to look at all three of these municipalities in this video, but really that won't take long, because as you can see, Monaco is only three and a quarter kilometres in length, meaning you can walk across the whole country in about an hour. So now I think it's time to find our accommodation, and I'll be staying here at Port Hercule. Let's talk about accommodation. Like most things in Monaco, accommodation is pricey. And I would equate the price situation to that of central Manhattan or central London. Hotels range in price from a stupidly expensive to just costly. And being such a small state, there isn't a huge amount to choose from. Tip from me, either stay just over the border in France, you can still walk into central Monaco in about 30 minutes, or use Airbnb. There's a really big Airbnb market in Monaco. Although personally, I wanted to stay in the heart of the action for this trip, so I decided to stay on the edge of the Yacht Harbour and Port Hercule, and I picked this hotel. 
So this is the boutique hotel Miramar on JF Kennedy Avenue, Port Hercule in Monaco. Costing around 400 euros a night. Let's take a quick tour around uh, my room to see what you get for that price. I'll start with the balcony and I'll show you a view over the harbour. Location is the obvious selling point of this room, looking directly from your room into the back of some millionaire's super yacht. Although you're located on a fairly busy boulevard, it isn't that noisy, particularly at night the traffic dies right down. But you're right on the edge of the Harbourside Bars district and only 10 minutes walk from the world famous casino. The Hotel Miramar is rated three stars. It's immaculately furnished, but like much of Monaco, space is of a premium, so the room is fairly compact. As you can see, the shower cubicle is situated right in the main bedroom, which isn't ideal, even if you're a fairly intimate couple. The bed itself is a standard double and isn't really much to write home about. The decor is quite nice and has a very nautical theme, unsurprisingly for being on the Monaco Yacht Harbour. For entertainment, you get a 32 inch LCD TV mounted on the wall opposite the bed, which mainly has French language terrestrial TV stations. Not to worry, you're not really there for the TV, are you? And looking back up towards the entrance, you can see a better view of the shower and wash space. As you can see, what you lack in privacy, you gain in style. Being a boutique hotel, there are only about 12 rooms in this hotel, and other than a 24-hour concierge, no facilities to speak of. However, don't get me wrong, I really do recommend this hotel if you're visiting Monaco, and I'll put a link in the description for you to find later. On the roof of the Miramar Hotel is a separately owned and very high-end cocktail bar with astronomically priced bottle service and cocktails. And, to be honest with you, I felt like I was reenacting that famous scene from Beverly Hills Cop when I sat down to be served. Sexy, uh, now, after you something to drink, a uh, wine, a cocktail, uh, uh, espresso. No, I'm fine, thank you. I'll make it myself right back there with a little lemon twist. It's good. You should try it. No, I'm, I'm fine. I see you look Unfortunately, unlike Axel Foley, I wasn't fine and ended up being talked into buying an individually crafted cocktail priced at this one 45 euros. Despite being eye-wateringly expensive, I can't deny it didn't taste fantastic. And as you can see, it's caught the attention of the blonde Russian yacht girl sat opposite me. After one drink at the Miramar roof terrace, I decided to move on to a harbour bar that was much more my style and I found this place the US sports bar themed stars and bars which I thoroughly recommend and again a link in the description for you stars and bars is very popular with yacht crews and it is a great place in the early evening to have a drink and watch the activity and the sun going down over the harbour Spend your first evening at the harbour getting settled in. On the next day, it's time to explore inland Monaco. And we're now climbing up the Grand Ramp, Ramp de la Majeure, from La Condamine to Monacoville, or the Old Town. The fairly steep 50 minute trek up the Grand Ramp brings you out into Monacoville, into a town square known as Place du Palais, right in front of the Prince's Palace, a Genese fortress built in 1191. Since the year 1297, the fortress has been the family seat of the ruling Grimaldi family, and today is the official residence of the Sovereign Prince of Monaco, the present incumbent being Prince Albert II. Pictured here, seriously punching above his weight with his wife, Princess Charlie. Nope, don't laugh, that is her real name. Monaco is a constitutional monarchy, similar in principle to the monarchy of the United Kingdom, 
although it differs considerably in that the sovereign prince does have a political role and a role in government. It's easy to think of Monaco like a large business corporation or company. The sovereign prince would have the role of company chairman and the prime minister of Monaco would be the CEO. And that's essentially what Monaco is, a multi-billion euro business. Prince Albert is the son of Prince Rainier III and Princess Grace. More about her in a minute. And he has been the sovereign prince of Monaco since 2005. He does have his detractors, but I personally think he does a very good job as head of the nation. Her Serene Highness, Princess Consort of Monaco, is Princess Charlene. Now, despite sounding like a teenage uh, YouTube rapper, she is actually Charlene Whitstock, a former Olympic swimmer from South Africa, now in her mid-40s. I'm not going to go into it here, but if you read gossip magazines, I'm sure you'll know that Princess Charlene has numerous personal issues. But I'm sure I speak for the whole United Kingdom here. I would much rather have Princess Charlene as a UK royal than that idiot Meghan Markle. The palace has a ceremonial guard, as you can see, dressed all in white on the main entrance. And most of the palace is private. Although you can pay to visit the state apartments for 10 euros an adult. Being on the summit of a rocky outcrop out into the ocean, either side of the Place du Palais gives a panoramic view of both East and West Monaco, and probably the best view in the city. Immediately south of Place du Palais is the old town of Monaco, Monacoville, with its traditionally narrow walkways and passages. In here you'll find hidden away numerous small shops and cafes, and it's certainly worth exploring for half an hour to an hour. As you emerge from the narrow passageways of Monacoville, on the south cliff you will find the architectural jewel in the crown of Monaco, the Musée Oceanographique de Monaco, the Oceanographic Museum. The building is an example of Baroque revival architecture built in 1910, and it's only when you view it from the ocean side you appreciate its scale and construction. The museum is as impressive inside as it is outside. It will cost you 18 euros per adult to visit the museum and it's well worth the cost and it will fill up a couple of hours of your time. One of the highlights of Monaco. 100 metres to the west of the Oceanographic Museum is another iconic Monaco building, Cathedral de Notre Dame Immaculée or simply Monaco Cathedral, built in the same year and in the same style as the museum. The cathedral is free to enter but does take donations. Inside you will find the grave of Monaco's most famous and most loved citizen, Princess Grace of Monaco. Princess Grace was formerly 1940s and 1950s A-list Hollywood actress Grace Kelly, who starred in movies such as Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder and the classic western 
High Noon. Grace Kelly met Prince Rainier III at the Cannes Film Festival in 1955. A year later, the couple were married in what's been called the first mass media royal wedding. Of course, Princess Grace typified the American fantasy of the American becoming a fairy tale European princess. She then became a darling of the media in the 1960s. She was incredibly popular as Princess Consort in Monaco and is credited for helping to put Monaco on the world stage in the 1960s and 1970s. Princess Grace's marriage to Prince Rainier produced three children, Princess Caroline, Princess Stephanie and Prince Albert, the present sovereign prince of Monaco. Alas, Princess Grace's reign and life must end tragically and suddenly on September the 13th, 1982. She was driving into Monaco on the notoriously treacherous road from La Turbie in France, accompanied by Princess Stephanie in the passenger seat. She suffered a minor stroke causing her to lose control of the vehicle and leave the road on a notorious hairpin bend and was subsequently killed in the crash. Princess Stephanie survived. The global media reaction to Princess Grace's death was in fact very similar to that of the reaction to Britain's Princess Diana's death 15 years later, although Princess Grace's death was a simple tragic accident. Her legacy can be found today all over Monaco, in numerous streets, buildings and monuments named after her, and across the border in mainland France itself. From Monacoville, the old town, we're going to move inland and take a brief look at the district of La Condamine, the main residential district in Monaco. Frankly, this isn't a very exciting part of town, consisting mainly of residential apartment blocks built during the 20th century. Because Monaco is built on a quite steep cliff, getting around involves a lot of climbing. Now, fortunately, the city has numerous public elevators to take you up and down the various levels in the city, like this one. This one goes from Boulevard Charles III to Fontville Shopping Centre. Font Viel Mall is your classic American style mall. Much more upmarket, about a mile away in Monte Carlo, is the Metropole Mall. So let's take a look inside here and see what's going on. Just opposite the Metropole Shopping Mall is one of Monaco's generally small public parks. This one is the Jardin de la Petite Afrique, or Little Africa Gardens. I did try and visit the larger Jardin of Exotic de Monaco in the southwestern corner of the city, but when I got there, sadly it was closed. Since we're now in the centre of Monte Carlo, I think it's time to visit Monaco's most famous landmark and the mainstay of numerous James Bond movies, the casino. During the day, the casino and its concourse is a tourist trap for scores of Instagram selfie taking day trippers from France. Now, if you're American, you're going to find the European casino experience differs vastly from what you would expect in, say, Las Vegas. 
the security is a lot stricter. There is a dress code, and this varies for this casino depending on what time of day it is, between day and night. Simply to enter and have a wander around will cost you €17. Euros. This is waived if you have a restaurant reservation or if you're a high roller on the guest list. Photo ID is required to enter the gaming floors, and the casino has a no photography rule. I do think this is only strictly enforced in the gaming areas. Parked around the Place du Casino are numerous high-end sports and performance cars. And I think if your car's worth €100,000 or less, you wouldn't even get a look-in parking here. To the right of the casino is the five-star and stupidly expensive Hotel de Paris. In my opinion, although not evident yet, the hotel and the casino in Monte Carlo combined exude a real, sophisticated European glamour that hotels in Las Vegas, such as the Bellagio and the Venetian, try to emulate but fail. OK, shameless plug for the channel now. I was in the Bellagio earlier in the year and I made a video on my experience. In the top right hand corner of the screen you'll find a card which gives you a link to that video. Please check it out. But back to the subject at hand, I think visiting the casino during the day is the wrong time to do it. If you want to experience the full bond, glamour and sophistication, you need to cover at night, particularly late at night after 10pm. So that's exactly what we're going to do now for the rest of the video. So for the last part of this video, I'm going to show you a taster of Port Hercule and Monte Carlo on a Saturday night. It's hard to socialise and film at the same time, so I didn't really take much footage. Sorry about that. So I'll start off this tour in La Rascasa bar in Port Hercule and finish up in the Casino de Monte Carlo. Let's go. Thanks for watching my video. I hope this video has tempted you to visit Monaco, a very unique and beautiful country and often overlooked on the tourist circuit. If you enjoyed the video, please consider clicking like because that helps me out tremendously with YouTube. And if you enjoy travel content in general, consider subscribing to my channel for more travel videos. Anyway, thanks for staying with me. Bye now.